Well, amen. Service is a little different today, obviously, but this is a little different day. Amen. amen. We're going to move into a time to take the Lord's Supper together, and I'm going to invite our deacons to come and get ready. If you have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, made that public through the, the biblical confession of faith, which was baptism, then we invite you to partake in this with us. What I want to do that's a little bit different in, in this is as they prepare to take these elements and present them to you. Uh, if you need them to come to you, you just lift your hand up. If, uh, but if you want to come, and then I want to sing something for you. And, and I, I wrote this song about three years ago, and I've only sung it once. So this will be the second time that I've ever sung it. Actually, wrote it four years ago. And uh, and so as it, we lay the ground, get the elements, and then when we finish the song, we'll take the elements together as we uh, as we move into the message. in the highest that's what the angel said peace on earth and favor that's what the shepherds heard stumbling down the hillside excitement mixed with fear looking for a manger at the manger living at the cross at the tomb in wonder life for me through loss we can live forever this glory we will share the call to whosoever is gently spoken there hidden in a manger. The star had beckoned clearly and a journey had begun through desert hill and valley looking for the sun. Prophecy had promised a virgin would conceive believing they came long of worship now to leave bowing at the manger living at the cross at the tomb in wonder life for me through loss we can live forever his glory we will share the call to whosoever is gently spoken there hidden in a manger the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of God's son grace, full of truth and joy for everyone, bowing at the manger, living at the cross, at the tomb in wonder, life for me through loss, we can live forever. spoken there hidden in a manger So you have the elements, such simple things, and so much great truth being presented to us, isn't there? 
And you look at the manger and you see God come among us. And the simplicity of being wrapped in swaddling clothes. And then we think of when he was wrapped in grave clothes. And you think that God came among us, that he might be one of us, that he might die for us, that he might give us life. So take that small side, pull it open, find that bread there. And I want you to think as we prepare to open God's word and look one more time at Isaiah 9, I want you to think about that bread as life. And as he became one of us, Jesus said, this is my body, which is what? Broken for you. Have so often as you eat, remember me. A life given for us because we could not do anything about the sin that we were in. And at the end of the meal, Jesus took that cup and he said, this is my blood. And I had to think, as any parent in the room can, when your child was born, and you think about the life blood pumping through them. And I don't know about you, but when I was in the hospital, when my boys were born, particularly when AJ was born the first, you think, my goodness, what have I gotten into? And what have I brought him into? And I can't imagine the father knowing full well what he had brought him into. Jesus said, this is a promise. This is the covenant that is in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Father God, Lord Jesus, I'm powered by the Holy Spirit. We are grateful for what you've done for us. And so today when we celebrate your coming, may we understand and celebrate why. And may you burn within us your power, your provision, your passion, your purpose. And so we remember. Open someone's eye, someone's mind, open someone's heart today to the gospel, the good news, the provision that is in Christ Jesus. And we pray this with great gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, 1975, the Sunday after Christmas, was when I walked to aisle in a little school where the First Baptist Church Pickerington was meeting as we had started that church outside Columbus, Ohio. At the time was a little community of about two or 3,000. Now it's a community of, I don't know, 70,000 or more outside of Columbus. And I walked the aisle and said, God wants me to be a preacher. 47 years ago, I think that Sunday was the Sunday after Christmas. I think it was December the 28th. And over these years since then, I preached my first sermon two years later and, and uh, started preaching revivals when I was 16, served in my first church on staff as a worship leader when I was 18. The ministry has taken many different forms from witnessing to preaching to teaching and singing and from small to large churches, camps, concert stages, from north, south, east, and west, from Canada to uh, Central America to Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Guatemala, El Salvador, in Europe, in Germany, in South America, in Brazil, in, in Austria, in Italy, and the Czech Republic, and Romania. And then my fourth continent I got to add when went to India. 
And now here I am back in Ferguson. Through many places and though, though many places and different ways, the message is still the same. That God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That as many as received him, he gave the right to become the children of God. That if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And still, after, after 47 years, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God and the salvation of everyone who believes. And I'm grateful to continue to preach the same message because it's still the only answer. It is still the only hope for the world today. And so for the last month, we've looked here at Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. So I want you to read it with me one more time. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast, and its prosperity will never end. And he will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. And then here we are. The zeal of the Lord of armies will accomplish this. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to continue to preach a simple message. We celebrate Christmas and we are gathered to get together today because these words fulfilled prophecy spoken 500 plus years before the birth of Christ, this prophecy about Christ coming came true. What's my point? My boys used to hate when I would say, what's, what's your point? Until I heard Brian preaching when he was a youth minister and I was listening to the message online and I heard him say, you're asking me, Brian, what's my point? <laughs> He's my son. My point is this, that God is not a talker. He's a finisher. And I have good news for you today. It finishes by saying the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. Accomplish what? Whatever I want? Is this a name it and claim it, mark it and park it? No. But what God has promised, he will accomplish. Say that. What God has promised, he will. That's right. What you truly need, he will accomplish. What will glorify him, he will accomplish. Because he is almighty, because of his personal zeal. So write that down as number one, and let's begin there. Zeal. Kina is the word. It means ardor and zeal. It means jealousy of men for the house of God and of God for his people. Now, it's interesting, zeal and jealousy. You think about those two emotions, and they are really both sides of the same emotion. Zeal and jealousy. A jealousy in English means a state of ill will ranging even to based on a perceived advantage or a desire for exclusivity in a relationship. Zeal means a passion or strong desire and a deep devotion for an object. Well, God has an overwhelming passion for you that burns hotter and higher than anything you or I will, will ever know. And it drives what he does toward us, you understand. And so the promised sending of the Messiah was related to his relationship with Israel in particular then, as he was, God the Father was identified as husband, if you will, to his bride people, Israel. And the Lord was not willing to be separated in that relationship from his covenant people. We have a different kind of God. When someone that we're close to is unfaithful to us, some folks are unfortunately very quick to push them aside and move on. But in this child born in the manger, we see a God who loved us the God whom we turned our back on 
That same God coming toward us to recreate a relationship. Praise God for his zeal for us. And he was zealous because he knew that there was nothing that we could do for ourselves to bring our own salvation. Psalm 53, verse 1 to 3 says, The fool says in his heart there is no God. They are corrupt. They do uh, vile deeds. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on the human race to see if there is anyone who is wise, who seeks God, and all have turned away. All alike have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. It's clear we have a problem, right? Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then we find out the, the, the scope of that in Romans 6.23 when it says the wages of that sin is what? Death. I was reading this week, and I want to draw your eye and your mind there. Isaiah 59 talked with the staff about it on Monday morning. It says, truth is missing, and whoever turns from evil is plundered. Verse 15 of Isaiah 59. God saw that there was no justice, and he was, the CSB says, offended. He saw that there was no man, and he was amazed that there was no one interceding. We couldn't do anything, could we? And the law and the rules and our religions could do nothing. And God saw that there was no one who could do what we needed, and he was offended. The, uh, the NIV says he was appalled. It's the word shaman. And, and it, it means, shaman means to devastate, to be stupefied, to be amazed, to be, to be appalled. And we are in this situation, and we couldn't do anything about it. So the zeal of the Lord, the arduous, passionate God, zealous for his own, Isaiah 59 continues there in verse 16. He was amazed that there was no one interceding. So listen, with his own arm, he brought salvation. And his own righteousness supported him. And he put on righteousness as body armor and a helmet of salvation on his head. And he put on, I love this, garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself, listen to this, in zeal as a cloak. Boy, that's been speaking to me all week. There was nothing we could do about our predicament of sin, separation from God, the death sentence that we were in. And God didn't look at us and say, well, good luck with that. God didn't say, well, you get what you deserve. No, I love the, the referencing there. He suited up. In the only garments that could battle our sin, and that is righteousness and salvation. And then he wrapped himself in the passionate desire for us and did something about it. Whoo! Write down number two, the Lord of armies. Maybe your translation uses the word almighty. John 1.14 says, the word became flesh. Who was the word? Verse 1 says the Word was with God and the Word was God. Jesus Christ, the baby in a manger, was God Almighty. We talked a couple of weeks ago about the names of God. And we said that people, God's people, when they would come to know God in a fresh way, they would experience Him in a new way, they gave Him a name, didn't they? They would take His covenant name or his descriptive name, either El or, or Jehovah, and they would combine it with a new understanding of who he was. And that's what's happening here when it says the zeal of Jehovah Tzabah. Tzabah is translated almighty in the NIV. It's translated here in the CSB, Lord of Armies. In the King James and others, it's translated Lord of Hosts. Tzabah means that which goes forth as an army of the whole of creation. I'll say it again. God is a finisher. He is one who moves forward. I, I would almost think that his name is Goforth. Thank you very much. That's not in my notes, but I had to say it right there. Just heard it in my head. He's one who moves 
forward with armies of heaven at his disposal, with all of creation subservient to him. He is the passionate one who loves you deeply, and he will finish what he started. Whew. He is a passionate one. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says, He who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Mm. He is the Lord. Can I just break it for a minute? I got to. See, he's Lord of the Adam and the avalanche. Lord of blessings and the blues. Lord of the comet and the caterpillar. Disaster and Lord of the dance. Lord of the equator and of España. Lord of the finite and forever, gravity and gorillas, horizons and hippopotamuses. He is the Lord of the instant and the infinite, the judge and the jury, the kings and koalas, the lords and labradors. He is the Lord of mice and men. He is the Lord of nations and neurons, of the obvious and oblivious. He is the Lord of questions as well as quantum physics. Rhinos and rodents, sorrows and sunshines, triumphs and trials. He is the Lord of ubiquity and the unalterable, the vagabond as well as the valedictorian. He is the Lord of the wishful and the woeful, the xanthine and the X chromosome, the Y chromosome and the yellow jacket, Lord of the zenith and the zephyr, and he is zealous to accomplish his purpose in you. And this child born, this son given, he is the almighty Lord of all. But he also has a passion and a zeal to accomplish what you need. Listen now. So write down number three and we'll be done. Accomplish. Listen so closely to me for a few minutes. We want to drive this home and we want to respond. Don't just hear something and go, that was nice. We got up on a Christmas day when we could have stayed home and had breakfast. So God has something for you today. 2 Kings 19.31 says, A remnant will go out from Jerusalem and survivors from Mount Zion. See, they, they were, they were going to be in captivity. And he says that will not be the end. It was their fault, but God says that will not be the end. They will go out as a remnant. They will go out as survivors and the zeal of the Lord of armies. Second Kings 19.31 says, we'll accomplish this. Accomplish, a saw. It means to, or to make, to accomplish, to advance, to appoint, to, to fashion. My goodness, what the child born and the son given has and can accomplish. You remember who Sir Francis Bacon was? He was a philosopher and a scientist and a lawyer, but listen to me, most of all, he was a believer in and a follower of Jesus Christ. And in a, a work of his, the literary religious works of Francis Bacon, volume two, listen to what he says. I'll just give you a piece of it. He says, I believe that the word of God the scriptures were from Moses' time to the time of the apostles and evangelists, in whose ages, after the coming of the Holy Spirit, the teacher of all truth, the book of scripture was shut and closed so that to receive no addition, and the church has no power after the scriptures to teach or command anything contrary to the written word of God. He says, I believe that Jesus the Lord became in flesh, listen, a sacrificer and a sacrifice. He became a satisfaction and the price paid to the justice of God. He became a meritor of glory and of the kingdom, a pattern for all righteous, a preacher of the word which he himself was, a finisher of the ceremonies, listen, a cornerstone to remove the separation between God and people, between Jew and Gentile, an intercessor for the church, a lord of nature in his miracles, a conqueror of death and the power of darkness, and in his resurrection, he fulfilled the whole counsel of God, accomplishing, there it is, the whole work of the redemption and the restitution of men. Pretty smart guy. 
What does God want to accomplish that required the child to be born, the son to be given? He wants to provide so that you and I could return to him. Listen, God was not just giving it a shot. He was passionate about winning us. His mission was not based on hoping we would respond. The zeal of the Lord accomplished the miracle of Christ's birth. The zeal of the Lord accomplished a life perfectly lived. The zeal of the Lord Almighty accomplished a sacrifice given at the cross. The zeal of the Lord Almighty accomplished the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ to the right hand of the Father. And the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish the return of Christ and an eternal kingdom will be established. And I have to believe, and this is where I've been going the whole time, that today... On Christmas Day, whether watching online or here in person, there's somebody that needs to respond to the overwhelming, passionate, jealous, ardent, zealous love of God that has left heaven in all of its pomp and splendor and glory to come to earth as a child born, as a son given, in order to make a way for you to return. And I've said all of this because you need to respond today. And you're sitting there at home or you're sitting here and you say, well, how, Pastor? Can I say this? You know how. Really. In your heart, you do know what you need to do. When somebody loves you, and they offers them, offer themselves to you, when they offer to forgive you, when they offer you magnificent gifts, what do you need to do? Receive them. Come and receive them. It's not harder than that. You stop, and you turn around, and you humble yourself, and you say yes. I have to say this sort of humorously that they're, and and I've been married 37 years, that's why I've seen them. In every chick flick, you know, that movie that the guy wouldn't go to if he wasn't with his girl, or at least he wouldn't tell anybody he went. (laughs) In every chick flick, there's that moment, that moment when the one that is running from commitment, right? finally comes to themselves and realizes what a fool they have been and how they would throw it all away if they continue in the way they've been going and they stop and they say yes and they say I will and I wonder this morning if you have turned away or even run away maybe you just turned your head Or maybe you left the country. Maybe you've unconsciously wandered or you have consciously turned your back on God. doesn't matter because it all results in the same thing. You are in need of God. And a child has been born. A son has been given and Jesus Christ is his name. Last week, Can you give me that there in B-flat? We sang, Now behold the Lamb. Can you sing that? The precious. The precious Lamb of God. Born into sin. Born into sin that I may live again. The precious Lamb of God. Can you sing thank you? Thank you for the lamb, the precious lamb, the precious lamb of God. Because of his grace, I can finish the race. Because of his grace, I can finish the race. The precious lamb 
of God. Now behold the Lamb. Now behold the Lamb. The precious Lamb. The precious Lamb. Why you love me so? Why you love me so? Because of his grace, we can finish the race. Born into sin, why? So that we can live again. And then it just says, why he loves me. Listen, I know me. And that's hard to understand. Him loving me. Why his zeal toward me directed him to leave heaven, I will never know and never understand. But he is precious. He is beautiful. He is wonderful. He is mighty. He is a prince of peace. He is the Lamb of God. And so what I want to do this morning on this Christmas day is I want, I'm trying, I want to coax you today, if I can say that, to do what your heart is telling you to do, and that is to come to him. And I think there's a place in this for every one of us. And here's the thing I want you to understand is that he will not reject you if you turn to him. He will not say, too late. He will not say, you went too far. He will not say, you did too much. No, I can promise you, he will say, this is why I came. He will say, come child, enter into my grace. Enter into my goodness, enter into my mercy, enter into my presence, enter into a love relationship, enter into the greatest adventure of your life, enter into eternal life. He'll just say, enter in. Perhaps you're wondering, how can I do this? And if we were to be honest, maybe you're saying, look, I've made a mess of things. And you're hoping this is true, but you're wondering if it could be. How? How? How, Pastor? For a child is born. A son is given to us. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And his dominion is vast and his prosperity will never end. And he will reign on the throne of David to establish it and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. And the zeal of the Lord, that's how, will accomplish this. This is not on you. It's on God Almighty. The one who promised is the one who will complete it. He came to you. The question is, will you come to him? What can we learn today is that the greatest burden that ever was born is the burden that sin brought into the world. And I love that Jesus said in John 3, the Son of Man didn't come to condemn you. You're already condemned. I came to save you. And, and he provided salvation for us. People, if Jesus Christ can accomplish salvation... If he can bear the burden of our greatest need, then listen to me, he can shoulder any other burden you bear today. Some of you have given your life to Jesus Christ and you're still struggling with other stuff and God's like, if you'll give that to me. And so I'm asking you this. What did you bring today with you that you're still bearing what I'm saying today in just a moment is to lay that on his shoulders. I'm not asking for hands raised, but what did you bring today? If you brought marriage trouble with you today, lay it on his shoulders. And if you allow him, the zeal of the Lord Almighty can accomplish this. Maybe you got children issues. Lay it on his shoulders. The zeal of the Lord of armies can accomplish this. Fear of the unknown, lay it on his shoulders. The zeal of the Lord of armies, burden of guilt from your past, lay it on his shoulders. 
the zeal of the Lord can accomplish this burden of guilt right now. Lay it on his shoulders. Because Jesus, listen, is passionate about you. Jesus loves you. He is zealous to be your champion. But you must, listen, you must give it to him. The problem is that the reason we so often continue to struggle with all of this kind of stuff is because we keep bearing it. Oh, you talk about it. You may shout about it. You may cry about it. You may complain about it. But ultimately, you don't give it up. And I'm just asking you to give it to him today. So I'm going to ask you to do this. And you're like, oh, where's he going with this? I'm going to ask you to let the walls down today. Let your pride down today. And I'm going to ask perhaps every one of us to come publicly, to come to him. If you've been bearing a burden that you do not need to bear, I'm going to ask you to come to the altar if you're able. And if you need to find a place here to kneel, what you're symbolically doing, there's nothing magical about the front here. But what you're doing is you're getting up and saying, I give it to him. And so I'm going to ask you in a moment to come and kneel, come and stand at the altar, at these front. If you can all at all do that, I'm going to ask you to do that in just a minute. You know, I think about the shepherds. They left the hills on that blessed night. They left behind their sheep. They left behind conventional wisdom, unbelief. And they came to the manger. The wise men, the magi, I'm sure men of wealth and renown and influence, and they left their place of comfort. Their reading of the prophecies, they had been looking for signs, and they left it all behind to seek a Savior. And as we celebrate this Christmas morning, I want us to follow those examples. Because what hinders the Lord from working in our lives is our pride that refuses to humble ourselves and bow before him. And so I want to give you the opportunity. I want to ask you to separate yourself and come and kneel or stand before him. Doug's playing. If you're bearing a burden, I'm going to ask you to come. And then in a few minutes, after you've had an opportunity to come here, I'm going to pray God's blessing over whatever you're dealing with. So come. Marriage difficulties come. Financial fears come. Fear the unknown come. Job insecurity come. Frustration with parents come. Frustration with children come. Fear of something that is on the verge of happening in your life come. Inability to shake the past come. Uncertain of the future come. Uncertain about your salvation come. Come on. I believe this altar needs to be full. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. If you don't find a place here, you can get behind them. You can kneel at the, at the front rows here, but come. As you're coming, as people are coming, maybe you're watching online, I'd encourage you to kneel right there where you are. If you've never given your life to Jesus, this is where it starts. Come on. There's still time. Come on. If you need to say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I confess you as Lord. I believe that you died for me and paid the price for my sin. And so I say, yes. I believe in you. I receive you. Anyone else? Come. Now behold the Lamb, the blessed Lamb of God. 
born into sin that I may live again the precious Lamb of God thank you for the Lamb the precious Lamb of God because of your grace I can finish this race precious Lamb Father God, we humble ourselves before you. We have come. We have become because we come up short. And if you're here and you've never trusted Christ, even as we prayed a moment ago, maybe you're struggling, then pray now, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I understand my sin separates me from you. But this preacher says I can be forgiven. And I believe. Forgive me. I confess you as Lord, as boss, as ruler of not just the world, but of me. And today I follow you. If you're here this morning and you're kneeling because you're struggling with marriage issues, can you just lay it at his feet? If you're a husband here in that that struggle, can you just pray something like this, Lord Jesus, as you loved us and laid yourself down for us as a husband, I commit to love my wife like you loved us. I commit to laying myself down and submitting to anything necessary to win my marriage. If you're a woman in that struggle today, can you say, Lord Jesus, as the church submits to Christ, I submit to my husband in a way that will honor you. I ask that you move in our marriage in a way that honors you. And so I lay it at your feet. And either both of you say, we leave this with you. If you're struggling with issues with your children today, can you say thank you for the children that you have given me? Give me the strength, give me the power, give me the wisdom to raise them in a way that they will know and honor you. Perhaps your children are older and they're still struggling and away from the Lord and you've been praying for them for years. Or maybe it's just been a change in their lives, in their adult time. Can you just lay this at the Lord's feet? Lord, I've done everything I can do. And I give this to you. Maybe you're struggling with an addiction that you're dealing with. Can you just say, Lord, I give this to you. Lord, I commit to getting help that I need. I commit to not keep this quiet and in silence, but to make it known so that I can get help. I give this to you. Maybe there's sickness in your life. And you can say, Lord, I I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you're going to do, but I give this to you. If you want to heal me here on earth, then I receive that from you. Know that you are able to do that. If you're going to use this in my life to advance your kingdom, then I surrender to that. Even, Lord, if it means that death on this earth is coming sooner than I thought, Lord, I surrender to you because I know healing is coming. Whatever, if we've not named it, you name it to him and give it to him. 
As Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It says, be anxious about nothing, but in everything, present your request. This is an opportunity for you to worship God by giving this to him. So give it to him. Leave it here. God, I don't take control of this any longer. I give you control. Father, we trust you. I pray that this would be a moment, a turning point for us as individuals. And Father, we would be remiss if as a church we did not say, Father, we do not rest on our past actions, but on the future opportunities. And we ask you to do things we never could have imagined in this place. And so we present our church to you today. We lay it at your feet. And we ask you to be Lord of this church. Provide for us exactly what we need to do what you have for us to do in this next season. And we will give you all the praise. Can you sing to me now? Now behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb, precious Lamb. Born into sin that I may live again. Born into sin that I may live again. The precious Lamb of God. Can you take it up? Now behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Born into sin, born into sin that I may live again. Precious Lamb, born into sin, born into sin that I may live again, the precious Lamb of God. Has it been good to be in the Lord's house together on Christmas Day? Amen. 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 Well, so in just a moment, before we go out, we're going to sing what we've been singing all month, so you can get us into F. We're going to sing what we've been singing all month. To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And he will rule within our hearts, and he will comfort those who fear, and he will be our Savior, Christ and King, as God himself draws near. Let me do this, because somebody would be worried that I didn't do it, so a couple of things. If you came prepared to give your offering today, then... You'll see here the offering plates, and you can come and put those in there. If you're our guest today, we would love to know that you were here. There is a slip in the pew in front of you that you could fill out and put that there, or there's a QR code on that slip that you could click on, and you could see it online. You can give that way online as well. And let us know that you were here. Let us know if God is doing something. If you've trusted Christ, if you'd like to talk about baptism or, or church membership, if there's a prayer need, let us know on that slip or let us know online. After you've done that, we're going to have, like we do every time we take the Lord's Supper today, we're going to have deacons at the door, and those deacons will receive a benevolence offering if you want to give that way. Uh, that's not your tithe. It's an offering over and above your tithe. You can do that, the offering here uh, or online. But we want to celebrate. I hope you have a great day today. Know that the office will be closed this week. And that's historically what happens here the week after Christmas. And so don't get too excited, office people. The office will be closed this week. And uh, can you stand? Take it up a little bit. To us a child is born. To us. To us a son is given. To us the king of kings has come. Come on. And we will worship him. To him we lift. To him we lift our hands. To him our voices raise. To him our voices raise. To him we pledge our lives to be. To him we pledge our lives to be. A sacrifice. A sacrifice of praise. And he will rule. 
and he will rule within and he will comfort those who fear and he will comfort those who fear and he will be our savior christ and king christ as god himself as god himself and he will rule and he will rule within our and he will comfort those who fear and he will comfort those who fear and he will be our savior and he will be our savior christ and king as god himself draws sing it one more time and he will rule within our hearts. And he will comfort those. And he will comfort those who fear. And he will be our Savior, and Christ and King. And he will be our Savior, Christ and King. As God Himself. As God Himself draws me to us. To us. Who? To us. Who? To us. Yes. To us. Amen. This is First Baptist Church, Ferguson, where God is exalted. His word is believed. His commands are obeyed. People are people. Unity is honored. Diversity is valued. And love is freely given. And Jesus is known, experienced, and Lord. God bless you. Merry Christmas to you. Have a great day. We love you so much. Bye-bye.